Okay, what's up guys? We have a real treat for you today. We have with us one of the greatest natural bodybuilders of the last 50 years. He's been described as a living legend, having been featured on the cover of Iron Man magazine. He's won the Mr. Universe title three times, winning the first one in, and I've got a cheat sheet for this here, winning the first one in 1992 at age 29, then again at age 33 in 1996, and then once more at age 49 in 2012. He's also won the inaugural Natural Olympia title in 1998. He has authored several books on diet and exercise, and having since retired from bodybuilding, he's become sort of the sports official historian, so to speak. I think we can say that. He has a podcast called Bodybuilding Legends, where he conducts interviews with past Olympians from what he calls the golden age of bodybuilding. Champions such as Dorian Yates, Lee Haney, Samir Banut, uh, Frank Zane, and the list goes on. Uh, he's currently based in Tampa, Florida, where he offers training seminars both in person and online, and somewhere in there he even found time to film an infomercial with us. Who else could it be but the one, the only, John Hansen. Hey, Jeff, thanks. John, it's so good to finally sit down and be able to do this with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We've been talking about this for a while now. I think uh, we first started last year, I think, talking right, about it. Right, Yeah, before we shot the infomercial, uh, we wanted to see if we could do it before that, but then you were going out for the Olympia in Las Vegas. Right, last September. Yeah, and then right afterwards, you had that seminar in Chicago that you were giving? No, it was in Michigan. In Michigan, okay. Yeah. And then we couldn't do it again a few weeks ago because you were going to head up to the Arnold Sports Festival, right. which ended up getting canceled because right. of everything. Right. And then just a couple weeks before that, you were interviewing Frank Zane. Right. So I gladly and understandably took second fiddle to that. So a lot of our audience out there are interested in fitness, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily hardcore bodybuilding fans. Right. So you can maybe just take a minute and go over some of the names we just mentioned and talk about what is meant by the golden era of bodybuilding. Well, the golden era of bodybuilding for me goes from like the 1960s to the 1980s. And that was when bodybuilding, see bodybuilding is considered uh, an art form. When it's presented on stage, you're presenting an aesthetic, artistic physique. And it's a well-developed physique, but it's an artistic physique also. So it's really a unique sport. It's really the only sport where what you do to train for the competition is different than what you do in the competition. So what they, what bodybuilders do to train for competitions, obviously, is they work out with weights, and that's what develops the muscle tissue. But they are developing a physique that is not only muscular, but is also very aesthetic and shapely. And that's what they show when they get on stage and they do their posing routines. And then they're presenting a physique that is very aesthetic, and they design their routines based on poses that highlight the strong points of their physique, and they hide the weak points of their physique. So there's a lot of um, a lot of artistic value there in presenting your physique, and it's all how the bodybuilders choose to do it. And so that was really, I think, relevant during that period from the 60s to the 80s, and that's the era that I kind of grew up in bodybuilding. And I think a lot of people look at that as the golden age of bodybuilding. Okay. Let's go ahead and put up a, a few of the physiques from that era here. First one here, let's put this one up here, is uh, Frank Zane. You yeah, Frank Zane was a unique bodybuilder because he wasn't a bodybuilder that became successful by developing a lot of muscle mass. He was very a lean bodybuilder, only weighed about 180 to 190 pounds in his peak. But he had a very aesthetic physique, really based... Uh, modeled after the Greek and Roman sculptures that bodybuilding is based on. And he was very muscular, uh, very defined, and a great poser. And he was a guy who just got everything together. You know, he, his tan was perfect. The way he stood on stage was perfect. The way he did his poses, even his mental attitude. So he was able to overcome a lot of those bigger guys by presenting really a perfect physique. And he went all the way to the top. He won Mr. Olympia from 1977 through 79. So to win the Mr. Olympia title three times is very impressive. And he had some real heavy names on his on his list, right, of people that he defeated. Yeah, he actually beat Arnold Schwarzenegger, the, probably the most famous bodybuilder ever. When Arnold first came to America, he was coming from Europe, and he was 250 pounds, very big, but he lacked a tan, he lacked the contest definition that Frank Zane had. So even though Frank he outweighed Frank Zane by over 50 pounds, mm -hmm. Frank Zane still defeated him. Okay, let's get another one up there. Let's put up here, we've got uh, Samir Banut. I think you've trained with him even, right? Yeah, Samir Banut and I have trained together at Gold's Gym in uh, Venice, California. And Samir is another guy, sort of like Frank Zane, very symmetrical, beautiful physique, very small waist, wide shoulders. And he always had that great genetics. He always had that great symmetry and shape. When he was finally able to 
master his diet and come in very defined and, and show all his muscle definition, he was able to win the Mr. Olympia title in 1983. Let's move on just a little bit more. We'll put one more up here. This guy you've got to know is Lee Haney. Yeah, Lee Haney's one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. He actually defeated Arnold Schwarzenegger's record. Arnold won the Mr. Olympia seven times. Lee Haney defeated that record, winning it eight times. So Lee was another guy, very big guy, about 5'11", 240 pounds, similar to Arnold. But he had a very small waist, and he was also very artistic on the posing platform. He really presented his physique beautifully. He had some really strong points, and uh, he really dominated the competition in the 1980s. Now, your podcast is unique and that you're not just approaching it from a technical point of view and asking, how did you achieve the physique that you achieved? You're going in deeper and asking those more personal, those more intimate questions, if you will. You're kind of asking, you know, what caused you to want to transform your body? Mm -hmm. uh, what caused you to uh, be able to overcome the hurdles that were placed in your way? You know, what motivated you? Things like that. And what's really cool for me when I, when I listen to them, and I've listened to the majority of them, is that these guys... A lot of them, all of them really, are in their 50s, 60s, and sometimes 70s. They all still have the same mentality, and they all still look fantastic. So, I mean, let's, let's just put a couple of them up here, if, if you just want to comment on them. Here we'll get a, Frank Zane again. Here he is at age 73. Yeah, so Frank Zane is one of those bodybuilders, like a lot of us, who uh, look at bodybuilding as a lifestyle. So even though he stopped competing in age 41, he's now in his 70s. He's actually 77 now. And uh, he still looks at bodybuilding as a lifestyle where he still eats the same every day and he still works out with weights. And um, Frank will also use a certain time of the year to try to peak like he did when he was competing. Yeah. So he trains all year and then he chooses, I think it's around the fall, to really reach his best condition. And he takes pictures and everything and that's what motivates him. So it works for him and it keeps him looking young and keeps him uh, living the active uh, bodybuilding lifestyle. Okay. And then we've got this guy here, Bill Pearl. Now, you know Bill, right? Yeah, I met Bill Pearl a few times. Great gentleman in the sport. He won Mr. Universe four times. And uh, Bill has been involved in bodybuilding his whole life, too. He'll be 90 this year. So he's still working out every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's he has awesome. a barn behind his house. <laughs> and he has a bunch of friends that come over, and they still work out. So, again, it's, this is his lifestyle. He eats really good. Uh, Bill is actually a vegetarian, ovo lacto That's right, I forgot about that. Yeah, he is. And um, he just follows the bodybuilding lifestyle, and it's kept him young and healthy all these years. This next guy here, I don't know if you ever had a chance to interview him. He's one of my favorite bodybuilders. In my opinion, it was, you know, highly respected, but somewhat underrated. I, I love his physique. Here's Serge Nubre at age uh, 65. Yeah, Serge had one of the best physiques in bodybuilding, no doubt about it. And he was another guy that was actually competing at an older age. And even when he stopped competing, he was still doing posing exhibitions. So a lot of these guys just use that motivation as being a bodybuilder to stay in shape and to follow the lifestyle. Yeah. We've got one more guy I'm going to put up here. I think you know this man here. <laughs> yeah. So. My last photo shoot. Yeah. When was this? This was? A couple of years ago when I was 55, I did a photo shoot. All right. And with that picture there, I'm going to go ahead and post you finally the big question. And that's, how is it that you can stay in such great shape at now 57? Mm -hmm. And what motivates you to want to keep going forward? And how has your training changed as you've gotten older? Well, you have to make accommodations as you get older because your metabolism changes and also your hormone levels change as you get older. Your testosterone, which regulates your muscle mass and your strength, that decreases, I think, after age 40, definitely after age 40, mm -hmm. maybe even a little before that. And then your growth hormone levels, which regulate your body fat deposition, how much body fat you hold on in your body, that also decreases, which means you can get fat easier, and it's also harder to build muscle. So you got both those things going against you. So that's why I think the weight training uh, program is so important, because that's the only way you're going to hold on to muscle mass as you get older. And it also, the more muscle mass you have, the faster your metabolism will go, which makes, your, yep. it, it, makes it easier to stay leaner. So. Now, I've heard you talk in the past about uh, visualization, and I've heard Arnold talk about this too, having a goal to kind of visualize, you know, you kind of see yourself as, as the artist or as the sculptor, how you want to appear, and then you set that vision up in your mind and you go towards it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, there's a picture of, of you here that we have comparing you and Arnold, both at age 23 here. Uh, you you want to comment on that, the similarities? Because that was kind of your goal, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I loved Arnold's physique when I started. He was my idol. So when I was a skinny 14-year-old and I didn't look anything like a bodybuilder, I needed a role model in order to um, motivate myself to keep going. So 
about a year later, after one year of training, when I was 15, I had my brother take some pictures of me, and I was able to see that I had somewhat, somewhat of a similar bone structure and muscle shape to Arnold. So I always used Arnold as my role model then and my motivator, and I was always looking at pictures of him when he won Mr. Olympia, and I tried to model my physique after that. So then when I got to 23 years old, as you can see in that picture, I compared myself to Arnold at 23, and it, there is a lot of similarities. And I think it was because I had that picture of Arnold in my mind all those years of training when I was building my body. So that's the, that's the importance of visualization, is that you're seeing the end product. Can you talk a little bit about how to protect yourself from injuries and how that changes as you get older? Because I know I get emails a lot of time from people that are in their 50s and 60s, and they're wondering if starting an exercise uh, routine is, is really advisable at their age. How, uh, how do injuries play a role as you get older, and how is that different from when you're training at, say, 20 years old? Well, the joints are different when you get older, so you have to warm up a lot more. But as far as the training itself, you should always pick a weight that you can handle. You should never use weights that are too heavy where your body can't handle it because that's where injuries come into play. So you always have to pick a weight that you're kind of accustomed to doing and then you can push yourself, but you have to gradually push yourself. And that's what I do now with my training is I don't really train to all out intensity. I don't go to complete failure. Right now, I only train each body part once a week. When I was younger, I used mm -hmm. to train each body part twice a week. Okay, now this is a topic that's you know very intimate to me. Let's say that uh, protecting yourself against injuries goes wrong and something happens. Now you're on the flip side of the injury. You talk about how to come back from an injury or from a surgery as, as you've had. Yeah. Talk about the steps you have to take doing that because we get a lot of people that are coming back from injuries like uh, Brian in our infomercial, you know, so mm -hmm. if you could just take a second comment on that. Yeah, that's frustrating when that happens, but first of all, you don't bounce back. You just sort of come back slowly. Mm -hmm. So you just look at where you're at when you begin training again, and then you just try to improve on that every week. And if you do that, then after a month or two months, you're going to be you pretty soon you'll be right back to where you were, and then you can start progressing from there. So you just have to come back slowly. Any kind of setback that happens to all of us. It's happened to me before. I think it happens to everybody who, especially anybody who pushes themselves in mm -hmm. the gym, you're eventually going to get injured, or like you said, maybe you have to have surgery or something. Yeah. But you just have to stay focused when you come back. You don't want to stop going completely. Yeah. That's the worst thing you can do. So as soon as you can get back to the gym, as soon as you get back to your workouts, start coming back and just start back slowly and just take it one week at a time. Don't look at where you were before. Just look at where you're at now and then just take it one week at a time. All right. Now, how about training from home? We'll get some emails from people. Maybe people 70 and over, sometimes 60 and over. They're intimidated to go to the gym. They see the gym as something for only 20-year-olds, people that have a beach body. Is that an excuse? Do you have to train in the gym, or are you able to train at home, too? No, you can do a lot at home. I trained for my first two years when I was at home, because mm -hmm. I was 14 years old. I didn't have a driver's license, so I couldn't go to a gym. I had to train in my house. And if you do go to the gym, uh, you shouldn't be intimidated. If someone's older and they've never weight trained before, they could start off using the machines. I think it would be good to get some instruction on what to do, mm -hmm. what the right exercise to do for each body part. So if you have to hire somebody to re write up a program, maybe show you what to do. And if you don't want to use the free weights, you can stick with the machines, like I said. But you can do either. And again, you just have to do what's right for you. Don't look at other people. Don't be intimidated by other people. Just do what works for you. Now, earlier you talked about the importance of diet and eating right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are at home right now. They're not going out. So say you're at home. It's a gray day out. You can't go anywhere. You see these lovely ads on television for, for all sorts of yummy, delicious pastries and french fries, all this junk food on there. Mm -hmm. How do you avoid temptations and just stick with the plan? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you just have to stay with a certain diet. I think it's good to stick with a routine, whether you're talking about your weight training or your workouts or your diet. So what I do is I'll eat like six meals a day, six small meals a day. I think that's the most efficient way to eat. Uh, that's what a lot of bodybuilders do because then we're able to get the nutrients in throughout the whole day and we're getting enough protein, enough co complex carbohydrates. It also keeps your metabolism going a little bit faster. So if it helps to write down your diet and actually put it down on paper, then do that. I used to do that every day when I was getting ready for a contest. I would write down everything because it helps keep you on track and it helps you going, avoid going off track and eating all the junk food that you see on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're stuck at home like a lot of us are right now, um, that can – that can, uh, you know, you can get off track doing that. We talk about natural bodybuilding, and we kind of juxtapose that against what's called regular bodybuilding, mm -hmm. or maybe we could call it the unlimited, for lack of a better word. 
Uh, some people out there say they're natural, but it's questionable. Uh, are there people out there that kind of claim that natural title, but don't necessarily follow that lifestyle? And is that really a good example to set for people in terms of goals? Is, is, does that set up unrealistic goals for people? Well, I think if somebody does that, claims that they're natural and they're not natural, they're probably doing it for marketing purposes yeah. to show that they've achieved this naturally because yeah. a lot of people look at uh, using steroids or other drugs as cheating. Yeah. So if you can do it natural, that's more of a, an honorable way to do it, I guess. Unfortunately, a lot of people are going to believe them, you know, because mm -hmm. they'll believe whatever people say. Um, but uh, if you know anything about bodybuilding, you can usually tell just by looking at someone who mm -hmm. is really natural and who's not. Not that you can't look good being natural, but the drugs definitely do work and they give you an advantage and they create a different look to the physique. Right. So it, it does. It has a tendency to set up, I think, unrealistic goals for people too, yeah, though, right? Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. I, and I know when I was training, you know, early on when I was maybe in my early, late teens, early 20s, I, I got injured at uh, 25. But I didn't really appreciate the difference between, let's say, natural and just, you know, the unlimited category. And I would, I would train and train and train, and I couldn't get myself to look like that. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's, that's, it can oftentimes lead to injury, too, because you think you're doing something wrong. Maybe I need to go heavier. Maybe yeah. I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. And it can push yourself into, into a corner. So, I mean, I, I've always, you know, looked at you, and I've been following you for, for 20 years now mm -hmm. in, in, in your career and, and beyond it now. And I've always been very, very impressed by, by your achievements, and uh, it's, it's just really cool. You practice what you preach. You're a living example of what you do. Thank you. So Thanks. we've co we've covered a lot of things here. I would argue that maybe you're more involved in bodybuilding now after you've retired than you were when you were on stage. Is, I mean, that's fair to say, no? Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to do when I stopped competing. When you're competing, you're only concerned about yourself. Yeah. So then when you stop competing, I think it's important to spread the word about yeah. all the benefits of bodybuilding. Uh, the exercise part of it, the nutrition part of it, how you can stay looking young as you get older, how you can stay being healthy as you get older. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I have online training and diet programs on my website, johnhanselfitness.com. And I'm also doing seminars where I go in person and I talk to people about the right type of training, the right type of nutrition, whether they're trying to compete or whether they're living a busy lifestyle and they want to find some way that they can include exercise and nutrition to still look and feel healthy. As, as they follow their lifestyle. So that's what I'm trying to do now. And the great thing about bodybuilding is you can apply it to all walks of life, to all different ages, men and women, and it works for everybody. And it really is the fountain of youth. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to preach a good word about that. Right. And then what's next for John Hansen in the future? You're going to get into corporate training or what, what other types of things are you looking at? Yeah, like I said, I'm doing more uh, seminars. So I'm doing more corporate fitness uh, seminars where I'm going to corporations and trying to tell people how they can follow this type of fitness lifestyle while they're living their busy lifestyle where they're traveling on the road a lot. And I'm also, like I said, doing uh, seminars for people in competitions or people who are training seriously for bodybuilding. And then, of course, the online training and uh, nutrition programs really help a lot of people because that can help anybody around the world getting in shape. Well, thank you so much. It's been great to finally sit down and do this. I, I really enjoyed job. it. And for those of you that want to find out more information about John and what he's doing, check out his website at www.johnhansonfitness.com. You can also check out his podcast, which is Bodybuilding Legends, on his YouTube channel. You can also check it out on Apple iTunes. Whether a bodybuilding fan or not, I'd highly recommend checking it out. If you like this content, please go ahead and hit subscribe. Until next time, go ahead and stay healthy and be safe and happy training.